Today we're going to be talking about how to use the equation of the conic section in polar coordinates to identify the conic, find its eccentricity and the equation of its directrix, and then sketch the conic. And in this particular problem, we've been given the polar equation r equals 9 divided by 6 plus 2 times cosine theta. Now the first thing we need to do is get this polar equation into some kind of standard form. Getting it into standard form will help us identify eccentricity in the equation of the directrix. Once we know the eccentricity, that will allow us to identify the type of conic section we're dealing with, whether it's a parabola, an ellipse, or a hyperbola. And then once we know all of those things, it'll be a lot easier to sketch the conic. So in order to start converting this into standard form, the first thing we want to do is divide through both the numerator and the denominator by 6. And the reason we want to do that is because these polar equations of conic sections always begin here in the denominator with 1. So if we divide through by 6, we'll get 1 right here and we'll be one step closer to standard form. So when we do that, we'll get r equals, and in the numerator here, 9 divided by 6 is the same as 3 halves. So we'll get 3 halves here in the numerator, divided by 6 divided by 6 is 1, so we get that for our first term, plus 2 divided by 6 is the same as 1 third, so we get 1 third here times cosine theta. Now at this point, we have enough information to find out which formula of the conic section we're going to be using. And I've already written it here, but we wouldn't have known this necessarily just by looking at the equation we were given. What we know now is that we have our denominator starting with 1, we have some constant coefficient on our cosine theta term, and we have a cosine theta term. We also have the addition or the sum of these two terms as opposed to the difference. So depending on your particular equation, you may have a denominator in the form 1 plus cosine theta, 1 minus cosine theta, 1 plus sine theta, or 1 minus sine theta. Each one is going to be a different polar equation here in standard form. Because we have 1 and then plus and then cosine theta, we know that we're using this particular equation here because we can match our denominator to this denominator. So based on that, because our denominator is already in standard form and it matches this denominator, what we can tell right off the bat is that our eccentricity is equal to 1 third because this 1 third is in the same place as this e here in front of our cosine theta. It's the constant coefficient on cosine theta. So we know that eccentricity is equal to 1 third. Now given that information, we can identify the conic because it's always true that if eccentricity is less than 1, we're dealing with an ellipse. If eccentricity is equal to 1, we're dealing with a parabola. And if eccentricity is greater than 1, we're dealing with a hyperbola. So we'll say that because we have an eccentricity of 1 third, we know that we're dealing with an ellipse. So we've identified the conic as an ellipse, we found eccentricity to be one third, now we need to find directrix. Well, the equation of the directrix is given away by the value of d that we get from our standard form equation here. Well, in order to get d, notice that we need to factor out an e from the numerator here. We know that e is equal to one third already, so we need to pull one third out of this three halves here in our numerator to find out what the value of d is going to be. So in order to do that, we can just divide three halves by one third. So if we say three halves divided by one third, the value of our eccentricity, instead of dividing by this fraction, we can multiply by its reciprocal. So we'll get three halves times instead of one third, we'll flip that upside down and we'll get three over one. The result here is nine halves. So what that tells us is that now we can factor out a one third from our numerator. And what we'll be left with is nine halves like this. And then in our denominator, same thing, one plus one third cosine theta. So just coming back to the numerator really quickly, we pulled one third out of three halves, we factored it out, and what we were left with inside here was nine halves. We can double check ourselves. If we multiply the two together, we'll get nine divided by six, which of course is three halves. We're back where we started here. That's how we know that we did it right. So now you can see we have matching eccentricity in the numerator here 
as e and in the denominator here, so we have that case, that means that 9 halves has to be equal to d. So we have the 9 halves value here. For d, we get d equals 9 halves. Now one important thing to note is that part of our formula here in standard form is a matching formula that tells us that the equation of the directrix is x equals d. Well, we just found that d was equal to 9 halves, so the equation of the directrix will be x equals 9 halves. That's the directrix line. Now, if we move on to sketching the conic, we can see what that looks like. So if we draw our xy coordinate system here, and we say that x equals 9 halves, remember that's 4 and a half, we'll say it's about here. We'll say x equals 9 halves is about here. This is the line, x equals 9 halves. So we've sketched the directrix, now we need to sketch the rest of the graph. Well, first thing to mention is that as with all of these equations here in this form, r equals e times d divided by either 1 plus cosine, 1 minus cosine, 1 plus sine, or 1 minus sine, those all represent a conic section where the focus is at the origin here. So this is the focus f. And in our case, the ellipse is going to wrap around the focus in between the focus and the directrix and come back out here to the left. So basically, we have the ellipse coming like this in between the focus and the directrix, and the ellipse will complete itself out here on the left-hand side. So this is a rough sketch of the ellipse, but what would be nice to do is to label the points where it intersects each of these polar axes here. So if we treat this as a polar coordinate system and we say therefore that this is the angle zero, this is the angle pi over two, the angle pi, and the angle three pi over two, what we can do is plug in each of these angles for theta into our original equation, find a value for r, and then label each of the points of intersection the points where our graph intersects each of these axes. So we'll draw these here, and then we'll go find each one. So if we plug in 0, the angle 0, for theta into our original equation for r, what we get is r equals 9 over 6 plus 2 times cosine of 0, because we plug in 0 for theta. Cosine of 0 is just 1. 2 times 1 here is just going to give us 2. So what we end up with is 9 eighths. That's our value for r. Remember that polar coordinate points are in the form r comma theta. So our polar coordinate point for this point right here is going to be r first, so 9 eighths comma 0, which is the angle theta that we plugged in. So 9 eighths comma 0. Now if we find this point here, we just plug in pi over 2 for theta, we get r equals 9 divided by 6 plus 2 times cosine of pi over 2. Well, cosine of pi over 2 is just 0, so we get 0 here, this is going to cancel. We're going to be left with 9 sixths, or just 3 halves. So our point here then is 3 halves comma pi over 2. We can do the same thing here for pi. We'll get r equals 9 divided by 6 plus 2 times cosine of pi. Cosine of pi is negative 1. So for our denominator, we get 6 minus 2, which is 4. We end up with 9 fourths. So our point out here then is 9 fourths comma pi. And finally here at 3 pi over 2, we'll get r equals 9 divided by 6 plus 2 times cosine of 3 pi over 2, which is 0. So again, we get 0 here. That cancels. We're left with 9 sixths, or just 3 halves. So 3 halves here, and that means that the point here is going to be 3 halves comma 3 pi over 2. So that's how we can make our sketch much more accurate by labeling each of these points of intersection of the ellipse and these polar axes. And that's how you use a polar equation like this one to identify the type of conic section and find its eccentricity, the equation of its directrix, and to sketch a graph of the given conic. So I hope you found that video helpful. If you did, like this video down below and subscribe to be notified of future videos.